Hi, and welcome to the show where we share the stories of the many who intersect with our healthcare system but are rarely heard from. My name is Kevin Poe, founder and editor of Kevin MD. Today, we welcome back to the show Alicia Billington. She is a plastic surgeon and she wrote the Kevin MD article, The COVID Vaccine Selfie. The caption matters as much as the picture. Alicia, welcome back to the show. Thank you so much for having me back again. I always enjoy spending time with you, and this is such a privilege to be here. So we'll get into your article in a little bit, but for those who didn't listen to your earlier podcast, can you briefly share your story and your journey to where you are today? Sure. So uh, my background is I'm a plastic surgeon, but I love math. I love statistics. And in the setting of COVID, it has been very frustrating observing all the misinformation um, and people not really understanding the statistics that's going on. And so it, it just, it just kind of got under my skin and was bothering me and I wanted to do something about it. And so that's sort of how um, I came up with the idea behind this article. Um, but I've been very involved in medical advocacy dating back to when I was in medical school. It's something I'm passionate about. I think it's something that all physicians really should be involved in because if we're going to really help our patients, we need to do it not only in the operating room or in the clinic, but we also need to have a voice for them, um, you know, speaking with members of Congress and helping elicit change uh, as in regards to our healthcare system uh, in general. Well, I completely agree with you. And I believe we last spoke in the summer. So Tell me how the physician voice has changed. Has anything changed since the summer to, to now? I think so. I, I think that uh, the, the coronavirus has made it so that everyone has to be educated on the topic. I mean, because mm -hmm. patients will come in from a wide variety of backgrounds, and it doesn't matter whether you're an internal medicine doctor or whether you're a plastic surgeon like me. Patients are going to ask you about it, and you really have to be up to date. You have to know about not only what's in the medical literature, but also what the misinformation is on Facebook. And what I've seen is a lot more physicians that were hesitant or afraid of engaging in social media before, for many understandable reasons, are now becoming more involved and having more of a voice. And I think that's really important because you have to have experts that are speaking on uh, these social platforms in addition to people that maybe are spreading some misinformation and think that they are knowledgeable about it. And I think it's probably been the single greatest attack of physicians against misinformation that I've ever seen because we all share the common goal and because COVID has been such a big deal. I think there's been a lot of other issues that have been important, but people just didn't they were afraid to have a voice or there were so many issues to pick from. It wasn't that there was one unified thing. This is different. This is something that is affecting everyone and every physician is involved in. Can you share a story of a piece of COVID related misinformation that you may have seen online and what you did about it? Sure. So, you know, there's been a lot of information out there that has a, a little bit of truth to it. And I think those are particularly the scary ones. Um, so there is one that I saw about doing the nasal swab where you do the nasal swab, you know, to, to test for COVID. And they were saying that it was implanting a chip into the brain. And that's scary. I mean, seeing that as a patient, that's terrifying. That's an area of the body that I happen to operate around. So it, it was something that I could say, you know, from my perspective, I know this anatomy really well, and that's not possible. And also, I, I happen to know someone that is fabulous that created these 3D nasal swabs that we use at the University of South Florida. And so I said, from that perspective, from an engineering perspective, like it also isn't feasible that there's a, a microchip there. So that's one example of um, misinformation. And, and kind of what I just did was, I just said, you know, let's talk about why you're afraid of this, um, why you think it might be true. And here's some evidence and some reasons why that that doesn't make sense. And how did that patient respond to you? Very well. I was extremely impressed. Um, you know, I try to meet people in the middle because a lot of times I learn from my patients that the fears that they have are grounded. I mean, um, there's sometimes some truth, um, some, some nugget that someone has given them. And I say, you know what, you're right about that. Like that is true, but let's look, explore, you know, X, Y, and Z. And I think if you meet them in the middle and say, you, you know, this makes sense. And then this part doesn't, you're not just saying, wow, you know, well, that was stupid. Like you're totally wrong because I, you know, the other thing about coronavirus is we don't know a lot about it. You know, we're still learning every day and we need to be able to say, well, I think this is what's going on or you know what I was wrong because there was a lot of, you know, going back and forth about the masks. So I think it's really important just to be honest with your patient, um, but to meet them in the middle. All right. So let's transition now to your Kevin MD article and it's titled, the COVID vaccine selfie, the caption 
matters as much as the picture. Now, yes. for those who didn't read the article, can you just walk my audience through it and share the story of why you decided to write it? Sure. So, you know, I was really nervous about the vaccine rollout because I thought, oh my gosh, here is our chance to totally screw up like decades of good research with vaccines. I was worried about how the rollout was going to happen. Um, I was worried about them testing appropriately, getting enough data. I was worried about them rushing it. Pretty much all the things I think most Americans are very worried about. Mm -hmm. um, and I thought, gosh, if we get this wrong, I'm worried about parents not you know, treating kids to prevent measles and people not getting the flu vaccine and all these other things. I was totally shocked. I was pleasantly surprised. The studies were done extremely well. And what I thought was cool was there's this like coordinated unwritten effort that everyone that got a vaccine started putting up vaccine selfies. And what I noticed was patients that were kind of on the fence or weren't sure were responding more positively to people that came out and didn't say like, I did it, you have to do it. Like you're wrong if you don't, if they had a conversation. And so when I put up my post, I said, you know what? I, I was scared about this mm -hmm. and I researched the heck out of this because I wanted to make sure it's the right thing to do. Um, and so that's why I said that the words matter as much as the picture. The picture draws you in, but the words matter because it's going to be what tells a patient, maybe this is right for me. And so it was really cool to see a lot of physicians come together in a positive way and in an educational way. And so that's kind of why I read it because I wrote it because I want people to uh, post those pictures, but I also want them to have a message that will engage and encourage people mm -hmm. versus deter them from getting it. So over the course in your practice and your workplace, have you noticed any resistance to the COVID vaccine or any, any hesitations? I have a lot. Um, I, you know, I've seen it from some of the nursing staff that I've worked with um, and certainly a lot of patients. And here's the thing, it, this is a choice. And I want everyone to make an educated choice. And at the end of the day, if someone says, I'm not doing it, you can't make me, they're absolutely right. Like this has to be something that they want to do. So I've sat down and I've talked with nurses and said, well, what, what scares you? What bothers you? What's the science that you're afraid of? And we talk about it. And a lot of times they bring up really good points. Um, but when we work through it, they're like, you know, I never thought about it like that. Um, and when we look at the numbers of, you know, how many people are dying from COVID versus how many people are having an anaphylactic reaction from the vaccine. They're like, wow, I never thought about comparing those numbers. Like, yeah, it kind of makes sense for me to go ahead and get that vaccine. The other thing is a lot of the stuff on Facebook is really where patients are getting their information from. And so I actually had a patient um, an hour ago, very nice older lady. And we were just kind of talking. I give everyone a COVID test before I operate on them to protect not only the patient, but also the staff. And I said, you know, are you going to get your COVID vaccine? She goes, oh, I just don't know. I have a lot of questions. And it struck me like this was it. This was her opportunity mm -hmm. to talk to a doctor about the vaccine and she's not getting that anywhere else. And so that's why I think it's so important that every physician be knowledgeable to be able to talk to their patients about it because it might be a plastic surgeon telling them you know, information that could potentially save their life. So when you talk to other healthcare staff who are hesitant about the vaccines, walk me through one of those interactions that you have with them. What are their concerns and what are some specific things that you say to alleviate those concerns? Sure. I think the first thing, and this is something that, uh, you know, family members have asked me about too, is well, wasn't this rushed? Um, didn't this happen too fast? And the answer is it was fast, but it wasn't too fast. So this was something where all of the rules were followed. Um, a lot of the red tape was removed and a lot of the red tape also involves um, financial difficulties uh, and, and raising funds to get vaccines through. The government stepped in and they said, look, we're going to buy a lot of vaccine, whether or not it works, so that we can encourage you and help you to get through this process faster. And then listening to experts like Dr. Offit um, on the FDA panel who has worked on vaccines himself, I mean, he came out and said, you know, I'm kind of worried about this going through too fast and, and this working. And then he came out later and, and said, man, this is a really effective vaccine. The data is extremely impressive. So listening to people that came in and had an open mind about mm -hmm. things, um, but asked a lot of questions, hearing those people come out and say, yeah, this is really effective, was very powerful to me. Um, so some of the things that I say is, you know, if you look at the death rate, um, and there's various percentages, so I hesitate um, to quote, but, you know, 
around 1.6% maybe of people that um, get the virus um, uh, may die from it. Versus if you look at the anaphylactic reactions, I think now with the Pfizer vaccine, it's down to about five per million. Um, and with the Moderna, it's about, I think, two and a half per million. Then they have an anaphylactic reaction, which is treatable. Um, and they have you sit for the 30 minutes. When you look at what that percentage is, it's such a higher risk mm -hmm. of having a negative outcome from the virus than from having a treatable, you know, negative, uh, negative outcome from the vaccine. And when I put those numbers next to each other, I think a lot of times everyone goes, oh, I didn't think about it like that. Um, and so that, that number is very powerful, I think. Now, of all the vaccine hesitant patients and healthcare members that you talk to, how often would you say that you're able to change your minds and make them think twice about um, actually receiving the vaccine? You know, at the end of the conversation, I don't say, did I change your mind? Yeah. Um, instead, I say, if you have more questions, I really want you to come back and talk to me about it. It's really important. And, and I learn from it too. Sometimes it, it pushes me to read more about a topic um, related to vaccines or to COVID that I didn't know about before. Um, I, have had, I have had a couple of people call me back and say, I went and got the vaccine. Um, but I, I don't keep a tally because to me, it's not about winning. It's, it's about providing information. I will say every single person that I've talked to at the end has said, thanks for talking to me about it. And, and to me, that's the whole point. That is winning. If people have the knowledge and they make the decision, if it's not a decision to get the vaccine, it's, it, it, you know, it's at least a little bit of a more educated decision. I feel like I have won. Um, or not one, but we have all one. I've also had people um, call and uh, maybe they got the vaccine, but their spouse didn't. Mm -hmm. And they've asked me to talk to their spouse and I have, and, um, and they still didn't want to get the vaccine, but you know, one, one member did and one member didn't. Um, it, and so I've seen that and I've seen how difficult Corona is on families because because families are split a lot of times in their beliefs about it. And, and so to me, it's not about, um, uh, it's not about winning. It's mm -hmm. just about like, let's get you the information. Um, and that's hard because you want to know like, yes, I was effective and it worked, but it, it, that's just not how it, <laughs> how it pans out. Sometimes you just don't know. We're talking to Alicia Billington. She is a plastic surgeon and she wrote the Kevin MD article, the COVID vaccine selfie, the caption matters as much as the picture. Alicia, we're speaking at the beginning of February, and we're going to have months and months of vaccines to hopefully end this pandemic. Now, right now, what's the single most powerful thing that physicians can do to continue advocating for the vaccine? I think every single day you have to read about it. Um, I have multiple medical sources and news sources that I pull from. And I go to the primary data. So when the vaccines came out, I didn't just read what was in the news. I actually went and scanned through the 5,000 plus pages that went to the FDA. And obviously we don't all have time for that, but I think at least being aware of what the hot topics are and being able to speak to your patients about that is important. And I would say it's really important that we have a unified front that we, um, that every single physician is talking to their patient about this, regardless of whether you consider yourself someone that uh, typically would be having those discussions on vaccines because you might in the setting of COVID where people aren't going to the doctor that much be the only physician that they have contact with for months. Mm -hmm. So I think that that's really important. Um, and talking to family and friends, I do think being on social media is important, but being on social media in a positive, um, kind way, you know, it, it's so easy to get on there and say like, you know, I'm a doctor, I'm right, you're wrong that doesn't help anybody. It, we really have to meet people in the middle and find out what their fears are. And um, you know what? Sometimes we're wrong about things too. So admitting when we're wrong is important. And my final question, your take home message that you want to leave with the Kevin MD audience. I just hope that every physician that's listening out there, um, every nurse that's out there, get involved and advocate for your patients because it is so much more than just the work that we do in the office and in the operating room. We need to be our patient's voice. And that means talking to the patients, listening to them, finding out what their hopes, dreams, fears are, and then representing them. I think we really do owe it to our patients to be involved in medical advocacy. That is a passion that I have. Um, and, and also patience. I, I think it's important to advocate for yourselves and uh, to bring good questions to your doctors. So it's a joint effort, but I really do hope that, um, and, and that's one of the passions I have in my life is to help improve the healthcare system in our country uh, and to advocate for our patients and each other. Well, thanks again for your time and insight. And thanks again for coming back on the show.
Thank you so much for having me.